Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Dear viewers, welcome back again. We were talking about youth and marriage. Um, if you just joined us now, inshallah. So we were talking about the issues like expensive or not respecting. And then if you have any issues regarding marriage or if you fell into any kind of trap, please call us and tell us. And then we could uh, say some solutions if it needs to be said. Uh, I'm going to go before the, before the break. I promise to go to Tamara because we missed you. <laughs> Tell me about your culture of marriage. Um, we want to learn something from um, Right. Uh, we were just talking about that. Uh, even though I come from a different uh, geopolitical culture and a different religious culture, mm. we find that we all want basically the same things mm. from yeah. a marriage. Um, oftentimes if I'm preaching at a wedding I will use the Genesis text where God says it's not good for the man to be alone. Mm. And what better impetus for a marriage than to have a companion, someone you can experience life with, the good in life Absolutely. and the challenging in life. So that was uh, really the biggest expectation mm. I had for marriage, to see myself married it was to share my life with someone else. Uh, you can have experiences, but they seem so much richer when you have someone next to you uh, laughing with you or crying mm -hmm. with you, uh, giving you that pep talk when you need it, and uh, holding you accountable. Uh, so how did you meet your mutually. dream man? Say again? How did you meet your dream man? Uh, email. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, it works then. <laughs> uh, actually, the church brought us together. Okay. Uh, because my husband is also a United Methodist minister. He may be watching. Hello, Mitch. Um, so we knew of each other, but we didn't know each other personally. So uh, he was experiencing some difficult times uh, with uh, his daughter. He had a previous marriage and he had three children, and his uh, daughter had gone through childhood leukemia. So I emailed him one day just to say, how is Dana doing? And we started an email conversation. We lived four hours apart um, and began chatting. And uh, then I moved to a different uh, church in Indiana, and we actually started dating. So we had so much in common, being mm. clergy, uh, that was huge because no one really understands the life of a clergy person mm. unless you are one. The party that gets canceled because someone dies and you have mm. to attend to the family. So we had that and that really brought us together and brought us closer. Um, is he my dream man? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been married? We've been married 13 and a half years. Oh. Wow, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Almost brilliant. 14, yeah. It's great because, you know, we get this news like in, 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 in Hollywood, it's just like, oh, he was married yesterday and then today's gone. What happened? And I couldn't wake up and go, <laughs> I'm not going now, I'm not, she's gone. I mean, these things are happening around yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, especially in, 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 in our celebrities are yeah. making it. It's, if you don't want to stay with somebody, what do you have commit in the first place? You know, it, it, yeah, and that's a major problem at the moment because with young people and we're looking at youth at the moment um, you know these are the people that they celebrate yeah their lives they're concentrating on what's happening with uh, the Kardashians and what's happening right. with the Brad Pitt marriage mm. and what's happening with this marriage and That's what's right. happening with that marriage and they're actually conceptualizing something that doesn't really sh that's something that shouldn't matter to them what matters to them is their reality and that's where, that's where their mindset should be, yeah. as to how I'm going to make my life, what is important to me. Um, you know, will these things matter to me? You know, Hollywood and Bollywood and Nollywood or whatever, you know, mm. woods you have. You know, are they, some, are they a concept that will mm. bring you f forward towards your spirituality? Are they going to unite you with your common person? Are these the people that are going to bring you closer to your children? No. What you need to be doing is focusing on yourself, your, your own reality. Your own reality is that I have to be 
married to somebody who's going to be compatible with me? How am I going to focus on living the life with them and bringing up my children to be a person like myself or like my husband or my own parents or people who have been shown as good role models in life? You know, we've got marriages of our prophets. We've got marriages mm. from, you know, various people. Um, you know, even in society, it doesn't have to be people from Hollywood. Yeah. There are people who have grown together and, and, and are, are out there in our communities that have made it big. But showing people that, you know, living as a couple has a huge amount of benefits. In your yeah. culture, and especially in Pakistan, I'd just like to know because we can learn yeah. from it. How does it work out, the marriages? So do you guys, if you could describe it, it would be interesting. Yeah, even in Pakistani marriages, um, you know, one of my pet hates is the idea that everybody seems to role model what's happening in uh, that Pakistani drama or that Indian movie or that Pakistani movie. Uh, we have to come away from that. So, you know, what's been happening is, even in Pakistan, um, it's all about fashion. You know, mm. uh, whose daughter was wearing what kind of bridal gown? Or, you know, he was wearing that fashion trend, you know, uh, kameez, pajama or whatever for the <laughs> wedding. Or how much money they spent on their wedding was more important. And we should be uh, looking at that or our wedding should be, com you know, comparative in that respect. And that's a very sad notion, a very sad notion. And, you know, I think South Asian weddings generally are very, very similar. Yeah. What, they're, mm. what, what they're not is the example that was given to us by the Prophet and his daughter in their marriages or the prophethood before, uh, you know, the, the whole Nabuwa, as it were. How much do you think in, in, in those marriages, your, you know, is Islam in it? How much Islam in it do you think? I think, you know... Two percent? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I would say so. <laughs> I would say so. Because the Baraka, the Baraka as it was put in for marriage isn't there. Yeah, the baraka that comes from the marriage isn't there, and that's when you should be focusing on. And we just spoke about having your two witnesses signing a paper. You're not having that realistic. The one idea that we were talking about before, um, and I have spoken to somebody just this week, is you know the idea of mahar and jahaz, mm -hmm. and that's I think there's there's a mis this slightly mis misconstrued here. Not slightly, what is it's mahar and what is entirely dowry. Mm -hmm. I think it's completely it. different. The idea is that the man is what is supposed to be providing you, and the rest of it is coming from the Hindu ritualistic idealism, which is that it's you all, provide. It's all the somehow all mixed something? up. It's a global village, they call it. It's all yeah. coming into even, it. But even you, you, why do as we have to? Talking about Sunni, the, you know, if yeah. I say everything we do nowadays in weddings and whatever especially for Muslim, everything we do want to please God. That's, how, it, that's yeah. how it's supposed to be. But almost like all the weddings, everything, everything we have to do have to please people, your chacha, your uncle, your nanny, your daddy. <laughs> yeah. And now you became, you know, like, I've been to a few weddings. I, I can't go on holidays because I can't save up. All the money I, 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 I do, it goes to weddings. Every weddings, if it's not uh, someone bit far, so you have to have a dress code. Like mm -hmm. in, in the wedding day suit, Everybody wears the same suit. <laughs> and then when the one is one, then you have a this and that. And can you imagine doing all mm. that? And then you have to give a gift as well. So you're yeah. spending about around 2,000 pounds. And sometimes you have to get a car as well. So oh, you get a good car. <laughs> so it's becoming <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's difficult, for, honestly. You're I would say sometimes, look, I'm not going to come into no weddings because I can't afford it. Right. Mm. Because you are pushing me. They say I'm not asking you to do anything. Then what do you mean you're doing? You want me to wear a dress? You want me to wear this? You want me to do that? You're pushing me to do yeah. this kind of mm. stuff. Why? Yes. I have a life. Give it to me. That money I can save and go to Turkey or somewhere. Turkey is cheaper, mm. yeah? Okay. I'm going to get it, man. Yes. So why is it we are focusing on people too much, not yeah, God? Yeah, as I told you, you know, that we are materializing the marriage, uh, the relationship, and uh, what we suppose not to. I mean that the family understanding and backgrounds and everything, not anyone is talking to you in a positive manner that you will be inspired, encouraged, 
uh, to make a simple marriage. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Your parents are not, are not telling you that uh, let's do a very simple marriage. And your, uh, your neighbors, um, there are a lot of examples around you happening that people are doing a lot of things in the wedding and they're doing in Bangladesh now, for example, I'm, I can tell you. Nowadays, like in Bangladesh, there will be three, four parties. One is that before wedding, there will be a mendi or in uh, mm -hmm. Bangladesh we call it tamaric session, you know. Yeah. And then uh, this is for this. Previously, used, it used to be a very simple in my like my village. It was a very simple, you know, indoor session uh, in your home. Some uh, neighbors, particularly the women, will come and will be like bashing the you know uh, bride. That's it. Now they will hire a particular um, hall for yeah. the this very <coughs> party, mm. and then the main wedding. Uh, it, it's definitely a very very uh, gorgeous. It has to be the decorations and everything, and the people will be coming with a very own decoration themselves. You know, mm. so you will be looking at oh wow like this and they will be definitely upload uploading the pictures on facebook yeah. um, altogether the trend is that you have to spend a lot of money on it that's the bottom line mm. nowadays but this supposed not to be uh, we we have to set examples we have to encourage people and we yeah. have to tell wherever it is that and uh, uh, look sister look brother this is not the way we have to do or uh, we have to preach and as brother told that it has to be started from the family. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Can I go to the brother? You mentioned brother. <laughs> yes. You remind me of the brother. Yes. I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> fine now. Fine. Okay. I, I, do you think, okay, I'm I'm do you think we are undermining our culture, our uh, traditions and our, you know, the oldest? Do you think we are undermining them? Because we're taking a route somewhere we don't even know where, I mean, end, where it ends. Before I start on what you just asked, I just wanted to say one thing that came into my mind. And I thought I'd remind that for my, it's a reminder mm. for me and brothers who might be watching it. Best a man can give to his wife is to love their mother. Sometimes that we forget. So I just wanted to remind myself <laughs> no, no, this. That's good. <laughs> we know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now, l l let's talk about our culture. This is, has been an issue for a long time. So mm. we cannot just say, like I said, we are challenged in a modern way and differently. But this has been an issue if you go in the history of our tradition. Mm -hmm. The uh, marriage was never so easy. There, there has been things added to it. Some marriage will take days and days and they'll be, you'll be inviting the whole village, they'll come in and stay over your place and you've got to make sure you give uh, uh, shari clothes mm. to every single one of them mm. that came to your wedding. Yeah. All this yeah. was part of our tradition that yeah. I witnessed. That I was yeah, born in, uh, in Bangladesh. And now we are challenged with something different, same challenge. Mm. But now we have to simplify, simplify, simplify the marriage. I want to start off with what you quoted from uh, your, the Bible and mm. a similar approach from the Quran. You are garment for one another. Yeah. Mm. Right? Yeah. And let's see if you, I, you can write a book in that yeah, yeah. subject okay. itself. Yeah. What does that really mean? What's the wisdom behind just saying you're a garment for one another? You've Co co you wear comfortably. Okay, we have a call um, on the line. Yes, please. please. Hello, call. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam, brother. How are you, brother? And uh, where are you calling from? I'm fine. How are you doing? What a lovely program you're discussing, actually. Yeah, I just want to say, um, these we Asian weddings nowadays, it's a, it's a real shamble. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like you're getting another mortgage, you know. It's, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a property ladder. Then you get these Asian marriages that cost 30, 40,000 pounds. Yeah. It's a joke. You know. yeah. I don't know why we can't go to these traditional yeah. Islamic marriages that it doesn't cost you much. You know? Tell me about your one, sir. Did you spend that much money? No. <laughs> yeah, I had to, man. That oh, really? <laughs> we all so been... bad, I had to call, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Lazy bank. bank said, brother, I think it is a big problem. It's an issue. It's an it's a issue. And then how can we help? Because I think we are moving towards a okay. end game. Like a lot of Crisis. young people don't Major say, I can't crisis. spend that much money. I'm not going to get married. And who takes the blind then? Yeah, no, no, actually, funnily enough, brother, I never watched these sort of programs, so I was just flipping my channels and what a lovely discussion you're having. 
I think you should get more of these programs and sort these youngsters out nowadays, isn't it? <laughs> Just, you know, stop getting loans and getting marriages. Anyway, have a good day, sir. Thank yeah, you, sir. Thank you for your call. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sure. I mean, great. he's taking the subject to a different level now. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Uh, did yeah. we disturb you, sir? No, no, no. So, yeah, so do, I, do I carry on from where yeah, I... Yeah, then so I'll go to... I'm just quickly, Susan. just want to touch on the government for one another. Is you wear comfortably and you are proud of it, mm -hmm. whichever way. Mm -hmm. Every one of us are wearing different clothing in different way, different dress sense. But we are proud and we are comfortable. Likewise, your wife and you are individuals. Mm -hmm. And you cannot compare your self with another couple. Mm -hmm. You are good in your own ways and be comfortable. Another problem that we have what breaks the marriage is now that we too much focused on numbers and figures and so and so. Again it's another issue where do you see your wife as an object or a person mm -hmm. who you love That's or does she see you as a person really. that she loves. That's an another thing that we want to look into it. And the brother said uh, that he had no choice. We have a choice. I'm going to be very honest with mm -hmm. the youths that might be watching this program tonight is that you have a choice. You can stand and you can be the person who will bring the change. It could be me, it could be this discussion that we're having that brings the change. And we want to bring the change where we want to say, this is the way I want to do it. I said uh, on my younger brother got married very recently and I said, look, we're not going to spend too much money on unnecessary things. Whatever we have, we'll use it wisely. Like I said, those you can enjoy your money to benefit the marriage rather than causing issues for yourself and others as well. So we don't need to start living like, if, if I was to live like a, a, live my life like uh, the boxer Amir Khan or Beckham and stuff, I mean they earn millions of pounds as we speak. Mm -hmm. As we speak now they're earning their money. Absolutely. Right? We don't need to, but we have something that they, that they don't have and they don't have, they have something that we don't have. But if you think deeply, it balances it out. Mm. So let's be happy with what we have. Let's create awareness where and that's another issue when we, put, we use religion. You know, we talk about why can't we go into the traditional Islamic marriage? Then this has to be understood properly as well, because mm. people are misguided and don't make it too boring as well. Mm. Then that's another thing puts people off. According to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and correct me if I am wrong, because mm. I've read some books, and according to your means, do it in the best way as possible. So don't overspend, nor be stingy. Mm. So invite people and have the best food you can. What are we spending money on nowadays? It doesn't benefit nobody. I went to a wedding, I'm going to give my own experience. Mm. Not giving any names so we don't know mm. if it's your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I went to. They spent a huge amount of money on the hall. The cars, there was a lineup of cars like powerful cars. And like I've not seen many cars in one road like this mm. for a long time. Lamborghini Ferrari. And mm. The food was really yeah. poor. Instead of spending money on those, they should have invested on food that I went for. I went to spend a bit of a good time. I went with my family to enjoy a bit of a meal, nice meal, and bless them, pray for them, and then that's it. But those cars that you spend money should on, should be happy with really the cars, man. Did not benefit <laughs> me because I did not go into it. Nor I went. I was interested in the car. I was interested in uh, the event itself, yeah. and the food I was eating. And the time I was spending with my family okay, and right. making uh, yeah, prayer for, for the couple. So sometimes money is uh, wasted and uh, then it, it, it's a burden on these two couples. Mm -hmm. Sometimes to stay on the trend, what we're doing now is okay. we're borrowing money. And what happens when you borrow money, on the very next day, they both argue. Yeah. And you as a parent have put them into the difficulties when they're just beginning to know one another, Absolutely. you put more to them. Yeah. You know, they're going to already struggle to come to know one another because they come from a totally different family, different route, different ideology. They probably had the different dreams as well. Yeah. Yeah. And they need time to sort of come together and find a new dream before even they can think of their dreams and share their differences. They're loaded. They are yeah. loaded with more. <laughs> so to yeah. the parent, let's not blame others. I think I myself should question myself. Mm. Let's talk to our children. Okay. Let's make them feel Can good. Can I ask um, to the sisters, two of your yeah. sisters especially, I mean marriage is a beautiful thing. We all married, yeah. we all happy, mashallah, we all happy. But we still haven't moved away. Still there is a domestic violence in the wedding. I mean not in the wedding, the, in the marriages. Yeah. And especially uh, where we are from, Pakistan, mm. Malaysia, those yes. uh, that area yeah. still there. And what can we do? I mean, that's where is this coming from? You know, people are claiming they're Muslim, but they are, uh, you know, looking down on the women and beating and all that's happening from both sides. I know in the UK we have a lot of 
<laughs> men are getting into the engine because yeah. of the you're getting beaten you know domestic violence yeah, yeah. but what we how do we get out of this issue because it is not many sisters are happy man yeah so if i can start um and i've been working with it's a true lot isn't it, it yeah, is, yeah it's absolutely there's a lot of cases it's a shame being in shame um, on islam absolutely um in the organization that i founded um and we've been working with a lot of women who are seeking a lot of support um but Having said that, this week I came across a male case who's also seeking support because of the way he was treated and abused um, during his marriage. And we are talking about Muslim people here. It's not just, uh, you know, it's not, uh, and I know it's uh, an effect of people of men, all faiths. No. Yeah, it yeah, affects people, too, affect so. people of all faiths. Right. But the idea is that, you know, we need to, I think, step up, understand that there are very, very unhappy marriages. There are people who try all their level best to become compatible, but yet it never happens. Changes aren't being made in the marriages. People don't change themselves sometimes. Um, and it depends on how you've been brought up. It's true. You, you know, you could have um, a couple from, uh, a, uh, a man from Pakistan and a woman from UK. The expectations may be very, very different. Yeah. Compatibility is very, very different. Um, but if you come from a broken background, home, there is, uh, there is a likelihood that your, uh, your psychology would, would match that continuously throughout your marriage. And then you will find it, you will struggle. You will never come up to, you know, you will never come to scratch where you can be expected to be a good husband or a good wife because you have never seen that. You have been party to a broken home all your life. You have never seen good role models mm. and you believe that whatever you're doing is right. And the worst thing to ever happen is when you don't seek support. And yeah. something like that is able to continue in front when you've had a child, then it continues into their, psycho uh, and into their psycho psychology and it continues as a cycle. The major problem we've, we're having is that when, when parents get involved or when they intervene, when they could be left out, mm. maybe perhaps to let the parent, uh, the couple try to work out or resolve the issue sometimes, and they decide to intervene, that can make sometimes things much, much worse. Now, if you look at uh, all the aspects of marriage and you've seen what happens in, um, you know, divorce is very frowned upon from Allah's perspective. It's only frowned upon because there, there aren't enough people who can mediate your marriage and revoke your marriage and support you. But when it so is what do you do when you have in that position like your life is became a hell could be you, a man could be a woman because yeah, of that. what do then, we do then we, you do need to we seek need support. to find a way you we definitely need to, need to yeah. seek, seek support you need to seek people who can try to either help you reconcile your marriage work towards mediation and if that's not possible definitely do not stay within that marriage if it's going to affect your children's mm. psychology and you physically if you're ab uh, being abused Please don't see that the physical abuse is most important. Actually, psychological abuse is worse. Yeah. Then you do need to separate. Yeah. Imagine with those kids in that family. Oh my God! I'm just yeah, I'm and that's that's very I think, important you know, that you need to focus we are, on. We are talking about the post-marriage crisis, but before that, if you go back before marriage, you know yeah. that we don't understand before marriage the boy or the woman and men both they don't understand each other's psychology mm. like what women's expectations are and what the men's expectations are like sometimes you know but women sometimes the, the funny thing is the men are not independent in their thinking as well my mom will do this for me my dad will do this for me my brother that's, will do this for that's me that's one yeah, thing absolutely. you're married man what's the matter with you yeah that's you one man. point then in that case you have to be uh, that that much matured enough to you know take a responsibility responsibility of a uh, woman isn't it yeah. and then uh, before or beforehand obviously you have to understand your wife psychology or uh, the wife has to understand the husband psychology you know sometimes what happened that I I you I talk about I'm going to come to you after the break yeah, Is that yeah okay? sure yeah, because sure. that looks, sounds like really interesting yeah. <laughs> uh, dear viewers we're just going to go small free break again I know we don't want to go but we have to go <laughs> and I'll see you after the break inshallah stay with us Assalamu alaikum. Oh.